Hi everyone. So today in this video, I'm going to be discussing the five most missed math questions that were presented on the June 2024 USA SAT exam. Okay, so let's just jump into them. So first one is an exponential function. So an exponential function f is defined by f of x is equal to c to the x power where c is a constant greater than one, if f of x is equal to nine times f of four, what is the value of c? Okay, so let's define what f of four would be equal to c to the fourth power, and f of six would be equal to c to the sixth power. Okay, amazing. And I'm also told that f of six is equal to nine times f of four. Okay, so now I can go ahead and substitute. So f of 6, that's c of 6, so let's put that in here, is equal to 9 times f of 4, and f of 4, we know it's c to the fourth power, so I'm going to put that in here, and then I'm going to divide each side by c to the fourth. Remember, it's um, we're dividing with the same base, so subtract the exponents. This will give me c squared is equal to 9. Finally, take the square root of each side, and this will give me the value of c, which is 3. Okay, amazing. So a great exponential function. So continuing our journey. Okay, so this one we have y is equal to 9 eight multiplied by 8 divided by 6 raised to the x plus c, and then minus b. And so how many times does the graph of the given equation in the xy plane cross the x-axis? So remember when it crosses the x-axis, y is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are positive constants, okay, such that a is greater than six and b is greater than c. Okay, so first steps, first steps first with this problem, um, I would plug in for when y is equal to zero just to see how many times the graph of this function crosses the x-axis. So let's do that. Put 0 equals 9, a divided by 6, over x plus c minus b. Okay, I'm going to add b to the other side of the equation. So I'd have b equals 9, a over 6, x plus c. And then just to simplify it further, I'm going to divide each side by 9. So b divided by 9 is equal to a over 6 raised to the x plus c. Okay, so now let's look at the constraints of the problem. So first I'm told that a it's greater than 6, so that means that this here, so a over 6 must be greater than 1. This means then like 6 divided by 6 is 1, so a must be 6.1 or higher, if we're dealing with integers, then should be 7. And then also we have b is greater than c, which just means that b is some positive constant. Okay, so what does this mean? We're dealing with exponential functions, and since it's an exponential function, given the parameters, it's an increasing function, which means that as x increases um, this whole equation of the function, a divided by 6 over x plus c, it's also going to increase. Okay, so basically, I know it's an increasing exponential function. Um, I can also test other limitations of the function, but if this is true, this means that it's only going to cross the, um, the x-axis at one point. Why? because there's going to be only one condition where this, when I have these variables that equal to each other, is proven to be true. So therefore, it only crosses at one point. So this is theoretical. Um, the answer should be one. But just to show how you can use Desmos to help you with this one. So remember, our equation is this. Um, I've already gone ahead for learning purposes. So I put y is equal to 9. I put 7 because remember a is greater than 6 um, raised to the x plus 1. This was the c value. And the I put negative 10 
because um, B is greater than C. And then I can also put Y equals zero because I'm trying to find where that will occur. And then we can just see if I zoom out, the function actually looks like this. I can change these numbers and it will give a similar looking function. But just to show, I can see it precisely where it crosses the x-axis. It's around here and it only crosses it at one place. So this could be a faster alternative to use Desmos if you're not familiar with the theory, the theory behind, behind exponential functions. Um, I'm also going to show another alternative on Desmos. OK, so alternative method, given the parameter. So all I did here was type in the actual equation provided. And remember what we you're going to be asked in Desmos to add sliders. So I'm going to do that for all of them. Then I need to go ahead and put what those parameters would be. So remember that a was greater than 1. So it's not going to be 1. But we can say it's 7. Remember, because it's a over 6, so 6 divided by 6 will be 1. Um, so I want it to be greater. I'm just going to make it 7. If I press play, look, watch what happens. It again, it only increases. Well, it's OK. Also, if I do make it 7, if I want to be more precise, I would have to put that it's 1.1. And let's say this is up to 50. It can go greater than that, but just to show. So here, when I press play, I can see, you know, it only intersects the x-axis at one point. Same with C. Remember, I put C was equal to, um, I had it equal at 1, because B is greater than C, so then we made B 10. So to show C, also look, it only intersects intersects here at one point. And then also with B, looking at the slider, no matter where it goes, it's going to intersect at one point. You should put the parameters down here to um, fully see that it is going to be one. But just for you know learning purposes, this is how you could use Desmos. Um, could be a good tool. OK, so you can use the slider function on Desmos. You can put in numbers previously like I did, or just know the theoretical relationship with exponential functions that if there is going to be a, a base that's greater than 1, which that would be the case, um, it's going to cross any given positive value exactly one time. OK, hopefully that made sense. You can always comment if you need more clarity. So continuing our journey. So this one, for the exponential function f, the value of f of 1 is k, where k is constant, which of the following equivalent forms of the function f shows the value of k as the coefficient or the base. So I think the reason why this one was missed, because perhaps um, the language. So remember coefficient, the coefficient in all of the answer choices here um, for example, A, it's 49, B, it's 85, 144.5, and 245.65. So here I'm going to look at the answer choices. However, I can see that the winner, it's going to be C. So quick explanation, because if I'm putting enough of one, this would be raised to the zero power. And anything raised to the zero power will give me one. And then one multiplied by itself will give me the exponential function, in this case, 144.5. And that'll be equal to the coefficient. However, just for learning purposes of this video, I'm going to go through each of them so that it fully makes sense. Um, if you got it, then skip ahead, but just to be thorough for everyone. OK, so starting with A. So A, I would just do f of 1 is equal to 49 times 1.7 to 1 plus 1. And that would be equal to 49 times 1.7 squared. And remember, um, so f of 1 
is equal to 49 times 2.89. And 49 times 2.89 is equal to 141.61. This is um, equal to the K value, and that is not equal to 49. So A can be discarded. Continuing, B, same thing. So, well, F of 1. Do, do, do. So f of 1 is equal to 85 times 1.7 to the 1. So basically, 85 times 1.7, that's equal to 144.5. And that is not equal to 85. So remember, 85 is our coefficient. Um, so also eliminate. And then for c, f of 1 is equal to 144.5, 1.7. 1 minus 1, so that's 144.5 multiplied by 1 equals 144.5, which precisely matches our coefficient 144.5. Okay, and I would do the same for D, but I have my answer, and that's our winner. So just remember this language. I think like when you're on the exam and you see these, you're kind of like, um, what is this? Oh my goodness. But no worries. Um, just remember what a coefficient is. Plug in and life is good. Okay, amazing. Continue our journey. Okay, so this one. Um, we have two equations. It says in the given system of equations, w is constant. In the xy plane, the graphs of these equations intersect at q19, where q is constant. What is the value of w? Okay, so if you're given one of these on the exam with all these variables, never freak out, always remain calm. All we need to do, the point of intersection is Q19. We'll just substitute this in for X and this in for 19. So this would be negative Q minus um, 19 W is equal to negative 337. The next equation, it's 2X minus WY equals 47. So same thing, I'll be substituting the Q in here for X and the 19 for Y. So that will give me um, 2Q minus 19W equals 47. Okay, so next I'm asked for the value of W. Since I'm asked for the value of W, it will be easier, I think, to eliminate the Qs, because that will just give me W directly. So let's do the elimination method. Um, and what I'm going to do is multiply everything here by positive 2. And then that will give me, um, so negative 2Q minus 38W. And then this would be minus 674. And now I'm going to take the two equations, sum them, so move this over here. So this will be 2q minus 19w is equal to 47. And then these will amazingly cancel. Um, this will be negative 57w is equal to um, negative 627. Divide each side by negative 57. And that will give me that w equals 11. And that is the answer. So this one too, I think, well, it's just systems of equations. Pretty straightforward. However, it was frequently missed on the exam, I believe, because of all the variables involved. But if this happens, just remember to remain calm and plug in the coordinates, and then life will be amazing. OK, and then final most was question. Um, was this one. So line J is defined by the equation 4X plus 5Y equals 55. Line K, so this is line J. Line K is parallel to line J and has the equation 24X. So 24X plus RY equals 15. If line K passes through point 0B, what is the value of B? Okay, so if you've been practicing law for the SAT, you probably come across very similar problems. So first things to note in this problem, one, parallel lines always have the same slope. 
So what I always do in these equations is I first rearrange everything in terms of y. So y equals mx plus b. Let's do that. So here, everything put into slope intercept form would be negative 4 fifths x plus 11. And then let's do the same here. So this would be just r y is equal to negative 24 x plus 15. Divide everything by r. So y is equal to negative 24 over r x plus 15 over r. OK, so remember, parallel lines, I'm going to write here, parallel lines have the same slope. So that means I can take their slopes and I can set them equal to each other to determine what r is. I know I'm not asked for r, but this will come in handy. So negative 4 fifths is equal to negative 24 over r. So negative 4 r is equal to 24 times 5, negative 120. Divide everything by um, negative 4. And this will give me that r is equal to 30. OK, so if r is equal to 30, let me go ahead and plug that in, because that will also be for here. And so this will, I'm asked for what the value of b is. So I can see what it is, but just to show all the steps. Um, so this would be the slope. It's negative 24 thirtieths x plus 15 over 30. Um, but just to be safe, I want to get what um, the point 0b is. I'm asked for b. So I can just substitute that in. We can see this will be multiplied by 0, and I'll be left with b, which is equal to 15 over 30, which reduces to 1 half, or 0 0.5. And that is the answer for that question. So super important, remember that parallel lines have the same slope. And yeah, these were the most difficult questions on June SAT. As you can see, I don't think they were too crazy in comparison to other exams that I've seen. I think most difficult might have been this one, but really it was a theoretical question and you can also use Desmos. So yes, these were the questions. I hope it was helpful. Um, like, rate, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll keep making these so that you guys can do amazing on your next SAT exam. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.